Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Fernando. I am a civil engineer in the state of Texas, and this channel is dedicated to students currently pursuing an engineering degree and young professionals trying to figure out what the next step is in their career. Uh, this video is dedicated to students who are currently pursuing an engineering internship or trying to figure out how to really rock, rock it uh, and making sure that they do everything possible to leave a good first impression and also make sure that when they leave this internship uh, they get an extension uh, either with an internship next summer or a full-time position right uh, so what are five things five steps that you can take to make sure that you really you know bring the best foot forward uh, so that you can whenever you do leave like i said to get that full-time position so thing number one step number one is ask a lot of questions uh, you know i've worked with different interns in the past who you know clock in clock out and that's kind of it and uh, they just do what they're told, right? And I think that's important, but it's not enough, right? And so what I mean by asking questions is make sure that you're inquisitive, make sure that you're asking even the stupid questions, right? Now, why is it important to ask stupid questions? Well, when you ask stupid questions, stupid questions, right? Um, you give an opportunity to the people who are coaching you, people who are training you, uh, the people who are above you, whatever the way you wanna call it, to really get a better idea of your knowledge base and to eliminate the assumptions that they have. Right, I think you know I'm six years into my career, and it's sometimes it's difficult to remember what it felt like to be a first time, you know, uh, you know, entry level engineer to be an intern because I don't remember what I don't remember. And, and I think when you're talking to different people, if you don't ask those questions as an intern to the people you're working with, it's going to be hard for them to remember and put themselves in a headspace to say, oh shit, like that's not what I remember doing, right? If that's not what I remember, uh, you know, going through. And so again. The intention here with asking questions is to really be mindful of the things that you don't know, right? Uh, because again, it's gonna make it's gonna show it's gonna show multiple things. It's gonna show people that you're inquisitive, that you want more responsibility, that you're thinking about the bigger picture, right? Because if, as an intern, typically you're given something and you're told, "Hey, do this particular thing, and once you're done, come back and do this thing, and then come back and do this thing, and come back." But when you're asking bigger macro questions, it's telling people, "Hey." I'm trying to understand from a bigger perspective, from a bigger picture, what is it that my task ties into? And why is it that the things that I'm doing here important for the other thing? Now, when you start asking these questions and you can connect the doc, dots for yourself, then you really start making progress and showing the people that, hey, I got this, what's next, right? And so, you know, what's step number two? Is, is showing up early and staying late. Now, what I mean by that is don't just, for the sake of showing up early and for the sake of staying late, but be mindful of, you know, the 40 hour work week is, is one thing, but be mindful of how much effort you're putting in, right? There's quantity versus quality. And I think it's important to be mindful of the quality, but at the same time, be mindful of the quantity. You know, you don't want to be someone who's known who just clocks in, clocks out. Now, again, if they have a very strict policy that says you only get to work from here to here, I understand. But what the intention here with this tip is to make sure that you're asking for more opportunities, right? And so that's kind of like tip number three, right? That's two and three together is, is to seek more responsibility. When you're asking to stay longer and stay later and to ask for more responsibility, you're given tasks that are more usually more associated with an entry level engineer, right? With someone who, who's had a little bit more experience, who's been in the company a little bit longer. So the more responsibility you can ask, the easier it is for them to put themselves in, in the headspace to say, you know what? This particular person, when they graduate, they're going to have a flawless transition into becoming an entry-level engineer uh, because the things that they're ha we're having them do as an intern are, are you know, beneath them, right? It's, it's things that they already got. It's things that they already understand. And so the more responsibility we can give them, the more we, we know for a fact that they are committed to their role. And again, going back to the, the commitment to being early and being late, it shows responsibility and work ethic to the company that you're working for. Because uh, it shows them that you're not just there to make a quick buck or just build your resume, but you're really thinking about your career and the things that you're trying to do in the future. Now, the other thing that I suggest you all do, step number four or tip number four, if you will, is to find a mentor within that company. You know, right? Really come up with an actionable plan on the, the questions that you should be asking. Figure out, you know, uh, who you enjoy working with. Figure out who you who you don't get a chance to work with, and, and find ways to kind of go and mingle with them, go and talk to them. Uh, people from different departments, people with different experiences. You know, uh, I think it'd be really wise of you all to really figure out, you know, and find someone, a mentor, if you will, if you want to call it that, uh, someone who's an entry level engineer, someone who's been there for five to ten years, and then someone who who's more of a senior role, right? Someone who's maybe a vice president or a senior senior project manager. I know sometimes interns don't get access access to people like that, 
but I think if you're being uh, creative in the way you're asking these questions, it's gonna be easy for you to set up a quick 15 minute conversation if you're doing an online uh, internship or if you're doing a remote, right? Uh, doing a quick Teams meeting or a quick Zoom call, just to kind of pick their brain and say, hey, you know, I'm going through this internship right now, but I, I'm really, you know, um, I'd like to be able to know what you did to get in a position to where you are now. Or what are some of the biggest problems that you faced um, in, in your career? Uh, what are some of the things that you did? Or I think questions like, you know, what makes an intern stand out? Uh, what, what type of qualities are you looking for an entry level engineer? Right, these are all questions that one, give you perspective on their careers and their, their career roadmaps. Uh, but two, it also gives you perspective on the things that you have to be mindful of during your internship, but also when you start applying for that full-time role. Because, you know, sometimes we all we want to come back to the company, but sometimes we find out through that internship that this is not the company for me, right? So it's good for you to be able to go do a trial run on the company, and then when you start pursuing the full-time positions, you get a better feel for, hey, that's not what I'm looking for. I really want to go this other route, right? So um, I think the last tip is, is don't spin your wheels. Make sure, be mindful, be very thoughtful of the things that you're doing. If you're given a task, Go and do it, right? Um, and if you get stuck, try to figure it out, Google some things, but don't give up too quick, right? And, and too quick can be very generic. It's a very subjective terminology. Um, it could, that could mean 10 minutes, that could mean 30 minutes, that could mean two days. It just depends on the work that you're doing, right? But what I mean by that is, if when you're given a task, I want you to ask, how long do you think this will take me? Okay? So when you're given and said, if you're told, hey, two hours, and you get to an hour and a half, and you're not even halfway done, hey, light bulb, something's wrong, right? Get up, go ask questions and say, hey, these are the things that I'm doing. What do you think I may be doing wrong? What are the things I should be doing differently? Because I'm an hour and a half in, and I'm still not even halfway done. Oh, okay, you know what? You were making some assumptions here, and you should have probably done this instead. Now you get your new information, go back into your problem, but when you spin your wheels, you get to two hours, you realize you're not even halfway done, and you spend another hour, and then you go and tell the person, hey, I'm three hours in, I'm not even done yet, right? That's kind of more reactive, right? Instead of being proactive and saying, I was given a certain number of time and I didn't hit the window, right? So it helps you with making sure that you're, you're being more uh, direct with the people you're working with, but you're also being very uh, thoughtful of the idea of making sure that you're not spinning your wheels. The last thing you want to do is work with someone who, you know, gives it too quick at the same time, right? Uh, someone who you tell, hey, go do this, and they Google something and they don't see it on the first page of Google and they give up. Or they go on, on a document for doing some, some research right, on a procedures or just doing some standards research on, um, on a city application or whatever the case is. And they find this document, they do control F, and they don't find what they're looking for and they give up. That's giving up too simple, right? So that's not what I'm saying when I say, you know, don't spin your wheels. I'm really being mindful of the, of the idea of if something should take you a certain amount of time, be thoughtful with the amount of time that you're spending on that. So again, those are just five different tips that I really suggest you all pursue. Uh, make sure that you're not wasting your time in, in your internship. Make sure that you're being very intentional and in doing everything possible to make sure that whenever you do finish this role, uh, you, you find new opportunities and you find new ways to make sure that when, they, when you finish, that they give you the full-time position. I know finding a mentor sometimes is super stressful, so what I did was I created a guide on things that you can take, steps that you can take, and questions that you should be asking yourself to be more mindful of seeking and finding that mentor. So make sure you guys check the link in the description uh, to download that quick guide that's gonna help you navigate you uh, to find the mentor. Now make sure you also comment, like, and subscribe so I can get a better feel for the questions that you guys are looking for, the comments, uh, you know, the different things that you guys are, are seeking from a perspective of a, a professional engineer. Uh, questions that I can answer for you all and then also just uh, make sure you subscribe next video I'm going to be sharing with you all things that I did to get a full-time position with no experience no engineering experience uh, so again thanks for watching I'll see you guys later take care